A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 68, completing and fitting the new valve rod links using split pins and washers. Before the rods can be fitted in place, they have to be bent to the correct angle. Even though it looks like the straight rod fitted in place is going to be okay, it isn't. It needs bending very slightly at each end to align. If you look at the original rod, you will see how much it's bent, or how little it's bent at the end. The bend isn't much. If I press the two parts together, you can see how shallow the bend is, but it's very necessary to do this. The bends at each end are very shallow, so you do not need to heat the piece of steel to bend it. Simply clamp it in the vise, with some soft jaws to stop the metal from being marked, and beat it into submission using a soft hammer. I've just been using the copper side of the hammer. When I bend the other end of the piece of steel, I'll use the hide side of the hammer, which is softer. The part that I've just bent fits at the rear of the engine. If you look at the previous clip, you will notice that the original link rod was left very rough on the end. This is now the opposite end, the one that fits into the valve fork. And even though the original link rod has been rounded, it's very rough. As I just mentioned, in this clip I'm using the hide end of the hammer, which bends this piece of steel perfectly. It doesn't really matter whether you use the copper end or the hide end, it's a matter of preference. Do not, however, use a standard steel hammer. You will mark the piece of metal. Time for a dummy run test fit, and it fits very well, but there is a little bit of spring in it. It's not fully aligned at either end. I could leave it like this and it would wear itself into the right position, but that is not good engineering practice. It's very important that these components do not have any side pressure applied by the rod being straight. I cannot stress enough how important it is to take your time and make sure that these links fit in place perfectly. Fitting the links is easy. Place the link in position, press a pin through, put a washer on the end of the pin and then use a split pin through the hole in the shaft of the pin. The edge of this washer has been chamfered, but there is only one washer like this. Most of them were missing. I didn't use the old split pins, I used new ones. Here is the first one in position. You will notice that I'm cutting this split pin using a pair of side cutters that cut squarely. Ordinary side cutters would leave sharp points on the end of the split pin but this side cutter gives a nice square cut. I am also using these special pair of side cutters to open up the split pin. I finished off the job with some very small narrow nose pliers. Apologies for the incompetent focusing in the previous clip. Unfortunately, my body is in the way of the light. When I move out of the way, the image is much brighter and more in focus. The problem is, when I make these videos, I'm really concentrating on the job that I'm doing. I tend to leave the camera on autofocus and sometimes it gets it wrong. If you look carefully at this image, you can see the subtle bends at the end of the rod. I suppose if you wanted to, you could make a jig for these rods to make sure that you get them precisely in the right position. Moving now to the other end of the rod, first of all I fit a washer to the pin, followed by a split pin through the hole in it. Exactly in the way that I've just shown, but just in case you missed that, I'll show it again in this instance. I'm using exactly the same principle and the same pair of special side cutters, so the ends are quite square. And to start with, I'm using the side cutters to initially bend this split pin. And as before, I'm finishing off the job using a very small pair of narrow nose pliers. I bought these a few years ago, I can't really remember from where, and they really have been useful. They're not super duper quality. But so far, they have done everything that I've asked of them. While I'm at this end, I'm going to fit a washer and a split pin to this part, which fits to the sliding block part of the valve gear. I don't need to go into great detail here, the principle is identical. Fit the washer, fit the split pin, chop the split pin, bend the split pin, and finish it off with a small pair of pliers. That is one side complete and ready to go. All I need to do is, using a piece of Scotch-Brite, clean off the marks and generally clean up the rod. Scotch-Brite is really useful stuff, it gives just the right finish on steel parts on a miniature locomotive. 
Before moving on to the other side, I thought it would be a good idea to apply some lubricating oil to the parts that I've just fitted. I have a long piece of copper tubing soldered into the end of an oil can, and it's really useful for getting at inaccessible parts, having said that these parts are hardly inaccessible. But at least I don't need the bulk of the oil can in the image, which usually knocks the focus out. One side is complete, now to do exactly the same at the other end, but I'm not going to show the process twice, that would be really boring. Here's one that I prepared earlier. And this time I'm cleaning the rod with the Scotch-Brite before I fit it to the engine. I should have done that with the link rod at the other side. Speaking about the other side, here it is. And as you can see in this clip, it's partly out of focus. This is an artistic shot. Watch this one. The washers are in focus, and now the end of the rod is in focus. I really do need to get out more. This clip shows the finished job. Washers and split pins fitted in position. At the rear end of the link rod anyway. Here is the rod fully fitted. It's slightly different at this side. This pin is longer than the others. It goes through the valve fork, the link rod, and another link arm that operates the lubricator. This link pin is secured to the parts like all the others, using a washer and a split pin. Time now to oil all the parts at this side. And that's the job done. I think it's a vast improvement on what was there in the first place. That is it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.